Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a journey into No Man's Land, Uncharted Territory, the place where none of you even knew you never want to go to begin with with some Philips CDI games, loading the updated mess core which is going to go out in a very very next update, along with some updated streamlined injectors to make the accessibility of this core as feasible as possible for you guys and gals. But I'm also going to do a separate tutorial if need be, but let's load up some of these uh, Philips CDI games right now, and you can look to the right and see some nifty and 3D box art of some of the games we're going to showcase. We have Alien Gate, a shmup game, we have Apprentice, an adult-oriented side-scrolling platformer. It seems like it is a QC platformer, but it has adult content in it with scantily clad woman interlaced within. We have a Hotel Mario, then uh, let's look at some of the other artwork here. Link Faces of Evil. Micro Machines, Pack Panic, and then we have a couple more here. Zelda's Adventure, and Zelda Wand of Gamelon. We're going to try Zelda Wand of Gamelon as our very, very first test game here. And we're loading it with the mess core. And I have to say, it runs a little bit better than 3 do on Saturn, and it runs better on PlayStation Classic than it does on the SNES and NES Classic. So this is another reason, aside from Ninja Baseball Batman, to have a PlayStation Classic. It will not run any better than this. It is playable for those of you who really want to traverse this travesty. But it's kind of funny when we talk about black sheets of various series like uh, Simon's Quest for Castlevania, which is actually an endearing classic, which I love playing on a regular basis. And then, of course, uh, the Zelda 2, which is nothing like Zelda 1, but I still run into hell out of the game until I beat it. And you can see we're already taking a little bit of extra time to load here. But we're going to go through a few of these games today. And uh, let's talk about a few other things today. How many TV series or movies have you watched that you really, really loved? And then later on, they became worse. They became progressively worse. I'm talking about you, Dexter. Fantastic show for the first number of seasons. And then the final seasons were just horrendous. Whereas uh, Breaking Bad, which is absolutely phenomenal, was flawless from episode one to the end. Other than the Fly episode, which I was not a fan of. That episode needed to be omitted completely from the whole repertoire of episodes. But right now we're doing Zelda 1 of Gamelon. For those of you who have seen this, like, oh, I gotta play this, I gotta play this, I gotta play this. It sucks so hard. It is so, so bad. You'd have a better time playing Lester the Unlikely for Super Nintendo, which is also equally bad. Well, let's try Zelda 1, the game one here, and then we're going to try a few other games. Again, it's still a game that many of you uh, would actually uh, defend to your death. It is a, a niche, niche thing for some of you. It sounds like they're talking underwater right now, so we're playing an underwater game. This animation it looks like uh, it was done in uh, an elementary school. Not quite as good as the uh, original uh, Zelda cartoon. That was a fun series. Even though they kind of made him a little bit of uh, a snob of sorts. Just like they made Simon and Captain in a little bit of a uh, snob too. But we're going to get to some of the action sequences right now. And again, many of you know about these games and like, I gotta play these. But uh, once you play these, you're going to be like, oh, oh, okay. Just like many of you might have fond memories of playing... Uh, you know, watching Batman, the original series with Adam West many, many years ago. And then when you finally watch it again, you're like, why the hell did I watch that? Whereas Green Hornet actually holds up pretty well, especially with Bruce Lee in the series. And am I playing a Zelda game or am I playing a Dark Crystal game? Because it looks like I have a Gelflin right here. But it is essentially a point A to point B and find keys to open doors style fetch quest thing. We'll find our first key real quick. And uh, you can play the music from uh, <laughs> Chariots of Fire to make this a little bit more uh, accommodating. And as far as these uh, multimedia systems like the 3DO and Philips CDI, these really did not do as well as the PlayStation 1, which uh, went the other route and had games like John Madden Football, Tomb Raider, and just completely blew every other system out of the water. And that is essentially why the TurboGrafx CD failed as well. Because it simply cannot compete with the uh, games that the normal common masses love, like sports games and such. I think there's a key behind this uh, hut here. Yep, let's go down to the darker recesses of... Uh, <laughs> We're going E.T. style into the well that we may never ever get out of. 
And I've actually never really had a big problem getting out of the well with an ET. It is a funny uh, thing that people relate to. But when I played the game, I actually was able to beat it without too much effort. And this is kind of interesting because uh, I'm probably going to die at the same time as this boss. Okay, I got the key. Now we got to get out of this joint. And we have these uh, precarious rocks that you don't know exactly which ones you can jump on. So, E.T., where are you, E.T.? Right here, on CDI, many years later. We're playing an E.T. remake. <laughs> We're playing an E.T. remake with a Gelflin from Dark Horse Toe when it should be Zelda. This is crazy. I'm about to rage quit this game. And you have to push the up button to jump as well. Let's get out of this joint. Okay, we're gonna go to the very, very next level now with our key, but we just got out of an E.T. pit there. Okay, going to the right and going to another hut. And one other thing that I found out here is that uh, some of the sequences where you're supposed to talk to people that are supposed to trigger, they don't seem to trigger properly, so uh, if you try talking to some people, you might actually just have to exit out of them. Like, if I try talking to this person right here... It'll go into that where I would think it would typically signify the trigger of cinema. I didn't wait long enough to see what really, really happens. But I just pushed the button again and exit right back out. So I don't think it's really going to be that big of a deal. I mean, it is a point A to B game. Nothing too challenging overall. We'll go to the next stage real quick. We got to hit this little, uh, <laughs> what are we throwing there? I'm using a B button to attack, and the A button does my projectile vomit, or whatever the hell that was. Okay, Taikogi Tower. Let's see what kind of, uh, clever enemies this has. And again, I am still a fan of Simon's Quest and Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. I like both of those games, and I played so many hours of those. It actually is uh, not as bad as I remember it being when I played this many, many, many years ago at Sears, the only store that even carried this way, way back. And it still reminds me of Lester the Unlikely, especially with the octopus style enemies. But we're going to move on to another Zelda game too as well. But yes, this is actually playable for those of you who really, really have to survive the uh, <laughs> masochistic nature of the game. And I'm on very, very low health there. Bam! I can continue if I'd like to, but we're going to go load another game right now. We're going to go low content, start director. We'll load up the, uh, maybe another Zelda game or the shmup. Let's see what we want to load right here. We'll look through the list. Uh, I might do The Apprentice next. So we're going to go to the CDI folder and we're going to load The Apprentice game. And, uh, let's do this. And I find this to be a pretty interesting game because it seems like a cutesy kids platformer, but it's anything but because as I mentioned, it has scantily clad woman interlaced within. I'm going to show you something else right now which you can do with cores like this, as well as the MAME 2003 Extreme core. With MAME 2003 Extreme, you can push R2, and then you can pull up a MAME menu and you can reconfigure the controller options and etc, 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 and dip switches and so on. Here you can push L2. And I can go to input for this machine, and I can actually program the mouse button 1 and 2, which I did to B and A. And then I go back to return the previous menu, and then I return to the machine. Try to avoid cl uh, clicking select new machine, otherwise you're going to get stuck in a very, very long convoluted menu of thousands of options and uh, machines that you're not going to really be able to navigate properly. But uh, we're going to load this game right now. And uh, check this game out. Again, it feels like I'm playing a side scroll leisure suit Larry style game with a scantily clad woman interlaced with them. But let's check it out for a brief moment. And uh, speaking of the 3DO and Philips CDI, which were critical flops at the time, I used to go to Babbage's, Sears, and Electronics Boutique way back to buy my games for Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and so on. And there were a couple people who worked there employee wise that would uh, pretty much buy each and every game that came out for either platform. Here we have our BIOS flash screen, which many systems have. And it feels like I'm in school watching a documentary uh, that I don't want to watch with that BIOS music. It isn't as cool as the Sega Genesis boot-up sequence or even a PlayStation logo. But let's try this out for a minute or two, then we'll get to another Zelda game. And there are three Zelda games. I'm going to showcase uh, two of them in this video. And uh, sometimes you might get a little bit of an overscan in the bottom like you see right there. But if you reload the game, you might not have it. But for this case, I'm going to actually zoom in and cut it right off the screen. There we go. It won't be on the screen at all for you. 
But yeah, just reloading the game once or twice, the overscan should be gone. It is a remnant from the game originally running in 4-3 aspect ratio versus many TVs, TVs uh, being in 16-9 nowadays. And some cores are actually set up to cut this uh, excess fat off of the screen, but this core is not set up for that, unfortunately. Okay, what are we playing here? Are we playing a premise game or are we uh, playing a Clockwork Orange style game? Where's Stanley Kubrick when you need him? Feels like the Clockwork Orange OST right now. So we had Chariots of Fire for the Zelda Wand of Gamelon game. And then now we have uh, a Clockwork Orange style soundtrack for this apprentice game. Okay, and uh, if we're talking about uh, games that are considered the best games for the platform, this is actually in many people's top 10. And we can actually shoot, or uh, we can jump with the uh, B button and shoot with the A button. Let's try to at least get as far as we can in the first stage here. It feels like I'm on my NES advantage on the NES uh, original system playing games like Radius or the Adventures of Biobilly like on stages right now. Kind of get uh, more uh, adjusted to the panache of the sheer intensity and challenge factor of those games initially. But nowadays I don't really need to use slow motion for anything. I just go with the flow. But yes, this is a very, very uniquely interesting platformer, well worth a playthrough, and I can tolerate it at this speed. Oh look, Skin of the Clad Woman number one. You can do a winner is coming style game and try to just have a little shot or drink every time you see a Skin of the Clad Woman. There, we got another one on our tummy right there. What's this all about, guys and gals? We'll get a little bit further and then we'll load our next Philips CDI game. Just uh, have some more masochism today. Again, I'm still having fun playing these. I mean, I'm going to be going through the Wand of Gamelon for sure. And the uh, Link Foes game. <laughs> okay. So that is Apprentice. We're going to load up the next game. We got a few more we can showcase today. But yes, the Zelda games are the ones that many of you want to play. And many years ago when I actually played these on PC, the emulator that I played them with didn't even have controller support, so I had to use a, a program to actually configure the keyboard controls to be on the controller that I was using at the time. But we're going to do Link uh, Faces the People right now. And as for mentioned, I find this probably to be the better of the games that are similar in nature on the Philips CDI. Between Wand of Camelot and uh, Link Faces of Evil, they're very, very similar and play pretty much the same way. One with Link and one with Princess Zelda. I find this one to be the more endearing of the two. And I'm at least going to try to get to the second stage here. And again, I'm going to be coming back and playing uh, particularly both of these Zelda games. The uh, Zelda Adventure game is not quite as good. It is pretty bad, and it actually crashed on me a couple of times in my initial testing. Whereas I had no trouble playing these elders and not being able to trigger the uh, speeches of some of the in-game NPC characters. But here you go, guys. You guys are going to be playing this this weekend. And I give personal thanks to BS Leno, as usual, for helping out with some of this process. And I essentially uh, want to go with an updated main like 2018 core initially, but there are dependencies that we needed like EMU and like and such that are kind of hard to get running on the mini S, NES, NES, and uh, PS Classic accordingly. So I went for the other route and had the entire main cut out and I'm running only the mess code. So we could have uh, over 100 systems run and uh, all the other main games are running fine on main 2000. Uh, 14 and before. We don't want to run any main guns on uh, main 2016 or 18 because they run really, really bad just like this. Oh, look at this wonderful, wonderful animation. What school do I have to go to to be able to do this? I'm not really knocking this. I actually find this pretty cool animation. I love it. It's almost like a, a what if uh, Marvel thing with different animation. When I played the Spider House game on PS3, that reboot, it had different stages that were like cell shaded in nature and uh, more like a uh, side scroll of 16 bit style. I like that it had different animation styles. But let's get into the nitty gritty of this game right now. And we're going to Nortinka. Let's see if we're going to have any other music similar to uh, Clockwork Orange or Chariots of Fire while we're here. 
have you will. This music is actually pretty good. Again, when I used to play these on a PC many years ago, there was no controller input whatsoever. I had to actually uh, do this uh, myself by inputting it with XPatter as a program. I have to find the key to get to the next section. I'm trying to remember where the key is. Let me look in here real quick. I don't remember if it was in this hut or not. It's been a while since I played this. No, it's not in here. I'm getting the hell out of there. That's just a wasted room, kind of like some of the rooms in Kid Icarus where you might fight enemies and there's nothing in there whatsoever. But yes, there's one specific place I need to go to to get the key, and it's somewhere around here. I might have to be up on the... oh, it's actually up there. So I'm going to have to go up to the second platform. I remember it being in the ice hut. This uh, hut right here is at dead end, so don't waste your time going in there at all. Unless you want to... You know, get a few snowballs or such. Yes, you have snowballs as your projectile weapon. You don't have uh, snowballs as a weapon in even the original Zelda. You have more like a plasma shot like you do uh, <laughs> in uh, the original Strider game. What is a snowball going to do? I find these snowballs to be pretty useless against most of these enemies. I'll show you what I mean. Let's throw a snowball at an enemy. Look at that. The snowballs don't do a damn thing to most enemies here. I gotta find some practicality to these snowballs. I need like a uh, fireballs or something. Even Zelda has a better projectile weapon. Maybe I just have to hit it at the precise angle of the dangle here. And uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna try to get that key without actually uh, perspire, not perspire, <laughs> expiring. But at least I can continue five times if I screw up. And we're near the icy hut, which should have my key to get me to the next level. And another game that is very, very well known on the system is Hotel Mario. A little bit like a pseudo elevator action style game with much, much less action to it. Okay, let's get my key here. I want to get that key before I die. I should be able to continue either way though. And I would, re I would highly recommend not going into the RetroArch settings and trying to change too much because this is very, very CPU and RAM intensive and you're just going to crash the core and or your system completely. So with this core, just load the games up and play them. Because when you're running 3DO, Sega Saturn, uh, Philips CDI, you're really using your RAM to the max on your system. And if you do too much, you're going to have to do a control out delete of sorts. Now let's get to that first section there. I'm on a half a sliver of health there. Let's see if these snowballs can do anything at all. Come on, what's the point of having snowballs if they're not hurting the enemies? I've played games before where you have a shield and uh, you get hit even with the shield. <laughs> it's just how it is sometimes. I'm playing like a Zelda Dark Souls style. Okay, there's another person that I would uh, not really be able to talk to. It actually doesn't trigger anything. Oh, bam! What about that? Heads up! Many years ago, I was actually at a picnic, and I was throwing the frisbee from up high in, like, a cliff, and it flew down and hit a karate instructor right in the head. I actually went up and thoroughly apologized to him. I did not uh, act like I didn't do it. I went down and apologized to him, but I'm like... This karate instructor is bound to whoop my ass for doing this. And I threw the frisbee probably like a good 200 feet off of a cliff and it just whacked him right in the head. What's with these enemies here? I don't seem to be able to even attack these enemies. See, <laughs> can I get by them? So it does have a little bit of a strategic element where you have to get used to enemies. Maybe my snowballs can help them out. Nope, not at all. I don't seem to be able to hurt these enemies at all. Maybe I could run by them. <laughs> Bam! 
So there's something you guys and gals can try out right there, trying to get past these enemies, which I haven't gotten by for quite some time now. We're going to load another game right now. Uh, we'll do Hotel Mario. And sometimes you might try to initially load the game because of the limiter, which uh, inhibits you from doing certain uh, things on the mini uh, uh, PS Classic. If the game crashes, you can simply try to reload it. We're going to load up Hotel Mario right now, and you'll see what that's all about. Uh, we'll load up the USA version of it. And if it crashes, I can try to reload it. Like, it just crashed right there. So I'm simply going to just uh, go to load it again. And again, you might have to do this occasionally because of the limiter. But if you use a powered USB hub or the OTG support, you shouldn't have to worry about this. And you can also use the PSP override exploit for memory committing that I showed you in my previous Neo Geo CD video, wherein you actually load uh, the PSP cord in a PSP game, and then you should be able to load these games without the memory uh, having an issue. So we're going to try Hotel Mario again, and uh, let's, it should load this time with no problem. There we go. Again, uh, if it does not at first succeed, try, try again. We're trying Hotel Mario, and this might be the final game in the video, unless I feel like uh, trying the Alien Gate game, the shmup game, which is really, really silly as well and contrived. But yeah, some of the FMV games are actually running better on here than on the 3DO and or Sega Saturn cores. So you can probably play Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, which I don't believe was ever released on the PlayStation 1. It would have been interesting if it was, but we have plenty of games that are FMV style on PS1. I'm going to have to double verify if Plumbers Don't Wear Ties was even on the PlayStation 1. And what's interesting is some of these FMV games, I think even Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, or at least some of them, are actually entirely on YouTube. Where you can actually click and uh, pick the next sequence and such. Dragon Slayer style. So some FMB games are fully playable on YouTube. Such weird, weird animation. But very, very uniquely interesting. Now, I did used to watch the Mario Power Hour many years ago, which had the Mario 3 cartoon and the Zelda cartoon. I had a lot of all of those. And I'm a huge, huge fan of the Captain N cartoon. One thing that, uh, again, I mentioned this in my previous videos, uh, where many times when you watch stuff, it has licensed music, and then later on they remove it. Like, Knight Rider and Captain N both had licensed music, and then they removed them later on. They had, like, Breakdown from, like, Beverly Hills Cop, which happened to be in a Captain N episode, then they replaced it with generic music later on. Hey, this animation isn't as bad as the live-action uh, Mario movie, right? But I still love watching John Leguizamo on that. One of my favorite actors. I love him and everything he's in. But we got Hotel Mario. I don't know how long I'm going to play this one. I'm just showing you it for a moment here. It looks like I'm going to have to actually collect all the coins. I have to say I've never actually played this game. It just wasn't my cup of tea when I saw it on the shelf. I would have much rather played Zelda. What's that? <laughs> what kind of sound effect is that? That sounds pretty hideous. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to try the next game, but uh, essentially I feel like I just gotta collect all the coins here and not get hit by the Goombas. I wonder if I can jump on these Goombas. Probably not like in the other games. Oh yeah, I can. Cool. <laughs> okay, we're going to try another game here. And again, uh, one thing I can do is actually exit RetroR completely. And that should uh, decommit the memory. And that should have no trouble loading it initially. Uh, let's see what other game we have we can try here. I'm going to load back in. So that is not uh, one thing to do. I mean, if you feel like you have a memory issue, just simply exit and you're going to be going from scratch. And I should have no trouble loading my game. So I'm going to go to low core and load the multi mesh core again. You can do it either way. You can load the content or the core, but I'm loading multi mesh core, then low content, start directory, dummy mess. And let's see what other games we haven't tried yet. Maybe we'll try one more singular game for this video. Uh, I will do this silly, silly shmup game as the final game. We'll do Alien Gate. That's our final game today. Okay, it should load fine since I cleared the memory by accident in RetroArch. Yep. And again, this is a pretty uh, horrendous shmup game. I mean, nowhere near the accolades of any kind of shmup, even uh, Insector X on Sega Genesis, which is not one of the better games, but still fun to play. 
And I'm have to again, I'm gonna have to do another follow up Turbo Graphics uh, 16 mini video because there are 17 shmups on that system, and I covered only uh, a, a select number of them in my last video. So I'm definitely gonna be covering more of those in my very very next video, including Sapphire, which is a tremendously amazing shmup game. So here we go, Alien Gate, our final game, and then I'm going to do a tutorial, and we'll get the update out by this weekend so you guys and gals can try this. And yes, I'm going to make this possible for you to run on the SNES, and it is classic as well, but it's not going to run as well as it does on the PlayStation Classic. And as far as the Sega Genesis Mini and upcoming TurboGrafx-16 Mini, it is not going to run any better than it does on here. It's probably going to run about the same. And yes, uh, Marcos GM, if you're watching, I believe we should finally be able to run TK, man. I'm pretty sure it's going to be able to run on the other uh, mesh core, which I'm also going to update. So I'm going to work on that as a little side project, because I had to get the updated main core in order to run that game, but I have the mesh code separate right now, so we should be able to get it going finally. This is awful. But I do like the cartoon style. Kind of reminds me of like a poor man's Captain Tomaday. If you really want to play a fantastic spot, play Captain Tomaday. You know what? We're going to do a little bit of an added bonus at the end of this video. Why not? We're going to actually uh, make up for the travesty of some of these awful games. We're going to play one of the best Sega Saturn shmup games ever right now. We're going to actually go to low core. Here's a nice little Easter egg surprise there. We're going to load MAME 2003 Plus, which is going to go out in an update this weekend. And we're actually going to load... um. A beautiful, beautiful Sega Saturn game, which also runs an arcade port. And uh, let's try this right now. We're going to do Hyper Duel. A beautiful, beautiful shmup indeed. And we're running on the updated MAME 2003 Plus experience. And this is yet one of the other best shmups that you could ever conceivably play in your lifetime. I didn't showcase this in any previous video, but uh, previously I played this on Sega Saturn. It is so awesome to be able to finally run this. <laughs> Tetnosoft is behind so many great, great games. But yes, we're playing a Sega Saturn game great on the arcade port right now. Or should we say the Sega Saturn was actually a port of the arcade version. A fantastic soundtrack without a doubt. And this makes up for Alien Gate, the travesty that is the Philips CDI. Terrible, terrible schmuck. I'd still like to talk to the original developers of that because they really had to go through hell and hoops. Event Horizon style to even get a decent game on that system. I don't consider much in the way of development tools being accessible to anybody. Like even the net Yeroos that was on the PlayStation uh, 1 development kit was so much easier to work with and you can make uh, games like Devil Dice on it. Really, really digging this game and I love that we have familiars here. I have uh, additional ships that are fighting a, a support ship. And there's another game that's going to go out in the update as well. There's a game called Action Hollywood, which is very, very cool as well. Maybe I'll load that up for a brief uh, run. And uh, I'm going to do a little bit of an Easter egg uh, question here. There's another game that was on Sega Genesis that was also made by Technosoft that is very, very, very similar to this. And it was also on a remake on uh, PS4. Or PS3, should I say. It was on one of those two that I picked up. Uh... Can any of you remember what the game was? It has a very, very similar approach to this game. Very, very similar in nature. And it starts with the letter T. Again, you can play it on Sega Genesis. And there's a remake reboot. It was on either PS3 or PS4. I have so many games on PS3 and PS4 that I have to double check sometimes to see which system they were actually on. And I kind of hate when you buy a game on, say, like PS3, and then they put it out again on PS4 like Okami. You should be able to get, like, a discount or be able to re-download the game. I mean, even on Xbox One, if you got the game on Xbox 360, you could download the game on Xbox One. But yes, the other game made by Technosoft is very, very similar to this, and it starts with a T. Let's see who can come up with that game first. Because I do thoroughly enjoy the original Sega Genesis one, as well as the PS3, aka whatever PS4 <laughs> remake of it. And I also like when we have some games that have the original invested within, like Flashback, you can play the reboot as well as the uh, original. Even like with Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion. Very, very cool stuff there. But we're going to try one more game. Uh, we're going to do this game called Action Hollywood. Another game that's going to be playable with the update, along with a half dozen other games. But let's check it out for a brief moment here. I should have this here. Action Hollywood. 
and I haven't tested this yet, but I'm going to verify it works right now, right in front of you guys and gals. But it should essentially load and be fine, because I do have the code in, in place for the game to run. Yes, we have it running, it never ran before. Okay. Temples of Chaos. Obviously, this is going to be like an Indiana Jones Temple Doom style level. Excalibur. Excalibur. Transylvania. Galaxy War. So, kind of cool here. We have levels based on different movie properties. That is obviously like a, a Rick Dangerous or an Indiana Jones. Remember the one uh, racing game we had on uh, PS2? That had you going through movie style uh, sequences. That was very, very cool. I'm gonna let you guys and gals try to figure out what game I'm talking about. I had uh, that game on PS2, and I also had it on Xbox, and I played the Game Boy Advance port as well. Very, very fun game. I'm definitely gonna have to showcase that in a future video. But let's uh, see if any of you can remember the game that I'm talking about, and also the other game that I was talking about that uh, was made by TechnoSoft. But very, very interesting here, and I uh, hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. There'll be more to come.